My name is Pete, and welcome to my garage. Welcome back to Pete's Garage, where last time we left off, we had just finished up getting our accessory drive set up for our supercharger system. Now we are going to continue on the supercharger system with our intercooler reservoir and pump mounting. So let's get to it. All right, for the LSA supercharger setup, if we are going to be using the CTSV lid like I have right here on this intercooler, we have to be able to get the coolant in and out of the intercooler brick that's underneath this. And back here at the back of the engine, you can see we have two nipples. One of them I have a hose already on just to see where that would go. And from the factory, this is the factory hose. Uh, it, it goes right here to a little filler right there. Well, Instead, I bought some hose that has little 90 degree fittings and everything. I, bought, I got a bunch of these. And I'm thinking I'm going to run that hose all the way over to right here. I can build a reservoir right here for my intercooler setup. Now from the factory on a CTSV, there really is no reservoir. It just utilizes the coolant that's in the system. And it just cycles it through. However, if we put a bigger reservoir, it'll have better cooling capacity to keep our intake air temps at bay. Another thing I want to do, here's the factory CTSV intercooler pump from the factory on our BMW underneath right here. This is our receiver dryer for our air conditioning system. I am keeping air conditioning, but underneath right here, there was a pump for secondary air injection and it, it sat right around here. So if I build, if I build a box right up here, think about doing some stainless, a stainless steel reservoir and have a hole in the bottom of it with a bung coming down and I can make the hose drop straight into this and make a mounting point for this. And then the outlet can come out the front here and then I'm going to put an intercooler or heat exchanger right here in the front. And so it's gonna go out that heat exchanger. I haven't got that far yet. I gotta get the radiator and everything put on. And then it's gonna come out that into intercooler brick that goes on the inside of this. Because inside of this, there's our intercooler brick, see that? First things first, we're going to have to fab up something for right here. Now I got to make sure I don't get in the way of our AC lines. So it's only going to be able to come to about right here. And then you can also see my hood line here. I want to keep it below the hood line and fit right here. So, you know, it'll hold maybe a gallon, maybe two, but that's still better than what a factory CTSV does. So let's get started. What I'm going to do, I'm going to make this out of cardboard. So I'm going to make a cardboard box out of this, and then I'm going to uh, take it to my buddy's place, and we're going to cut out out of uh, stainless steel and TIG weld a box together and everything and make this work. At least that's the plan. Alright, so I'll cut that out. Hopefully that gives me about the right angles that I need. If not, then I'll just make another one. Alright, that's going to fit in there like that.
let's see, version 2.0. Let's see how this fits. So I need to do the math here and I feel like I can turn that into a triangle and a rectangle and I can do a little bit of math to see how much that is going to hold. All right, so I just did the math. Oh, 232 and three quarters cubic inches. So almost 233 cubic inches of water displacement here. And if I convert that to liters, it's 3.8 liters, a little over 3.8 liters. So basically a 3.8. Um, and if I convert those liters to gallons, I get exactly 1.01 .01 gallons. This should be at least pretty easy to, to make on AutoCAD or something and, uh, and have those cut out and weld together. So, um, yeah, whenever uh, the hose comes through, you know, I'll have it dump. I'll have it dump into the top there. So my used coolant for my intercooler comes out the top. And then the new stuff, I'm going to have a hole drilled in the bottom of this thing with a fitting that runs down below this plate right there underneath. So now I need to move down underneath and make a bracket to mount my pump. So then I can actually see where exactly I need to make my hole in my box to where it'll line up with the pump. Okay. So this is the factory air pump for the uh, secondary air injection for the emission system on the BMW. And it sat right in, hey, I think it sat, yeah, something like this, right? So it sat right there and this is the plug for it. We don't need this, it's out of here. But we do need this and this is the coolant pump for our intercooler for, uh, this is a stock one on a CTS-V. Now, the nice thing is, is if you upgrade this you, <laughs> to, to a different style pump, like the ZL1 pump, um, it kind of comes with a weird jumper harness right here. Since I have a nice little jumper harness right here, and I have the correct connector, that makes it easy because this connector right here from the BMW, it's not the same connector, but I can just cut off cut off the wires right there and then run it to this and then repurpose this circuit so I don't have to run a whole new circuit all the way through the car. And since this leads into that, this leads into the electrical box where I'm gonna put my PCM and my relays and ignition stuff, perfect. Anytime the ignition power's on, so anytime I get power to like my fuel injectors or that relay, I'm gonna put an ignition relay in there it's also going to power up this pump or a relay to run this pump because there was a relay that ran this secondary air injection pump. So I'm just going to trigger that relay on. These wires are much bigger gauge than the wires on this pump. Therefore, the circuit is going to be up to the task. Now, I just need to make a way to mount this in here to where it's going to work correctly. Now I do have two bolts right there that were from that bracket. All I need to do is make a piece that runs like this and then another piece that comes down that these bolt to. So that'll be easy enough. Love it when plans work. And this, and since this is right below where that reservoir is, it's just going to gravity feed right into this from that reservoir. And then it's gonna push it out over to my intercooler that I'm gonna put right here in the front. So instead of my auxiliary fan that we had from the BMW that sits on the outside right here, instead of that fan, I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put a heat exchanger right there. And that's the last part of the system that we have right here. All right, so here for my intercooler pump, I have made a bracket that's going to bolt into the factory location for the air pump. And then I'm gonna make it come down and then I'm gonna have a little L bracket come down off of that, but I have to weld that to that first. All right, I got some very poor tacks here, but I can just finish welding it together. 
All right, here you can see we now have welded up bracket. Now I need to make something that drops down right here to where I can attach my pump to. So I'm gonna weld a piece of angle iron onto that and have a couple of holes for the mount. All right, so here's, here's my bracket. Got my three anchor points where it bolts up there. I got my two that are gonna hold my clamps on. All right, and you can see on the back side, I've welded a couple of nuts on there. So the two bolts just go in and hold it and I don't have to get behind there with a wrench or anything. So I'm gonna finish welding this thing up. You can see my bracket here, mounts in three different places. And then I have this spot welded on. Uh, some of my best welding I've ever done, probably on the back side there. Got my nuts welded on there. And now time to put the pump on. So you can see putting those, those nuts on the back side of that bracket really does help. So in order to install this, I don't have to sit here and hold a nut on the back side. It makes it easy. I just gotta broom, tighten it up. All right, now I'm plumbing the cooling system and my intercooler system. So I have my reservoir for the intercooler right here that then runs down into the pump down here. And then it's going to go out of the pump over here into a heat exchanger that I have to mount right there. So the next thing I need to do is mount a heat exchanger because then it comes out of the heat exchanger up here and then runs all the way to the back of the lid. And then out of the lid comes back up here to my reservoir. So now I need to make room for my heat exchanger. Let me show you what I got. All right, so I got this heat exchanger right here. It is 24 inches by 12 inches by one inch thick. And it is all aluminum. It is from frozenboost.com and fairly uh, reasonable as far as price and everything. I had to make a couple of adjustments uh, to get this plug in and the petcock in there, but it wasn't very hard. So for the price, I'd say it was, it was a pretty good deal. It is aluminum. Um, I do need to get a couple of fittings for the end to hook my hoses onto, but I am planning on mounting it to where my hose outlets are going to be coming out that way. Now, if I put it up here, what am I catching on? Okay. If I go about right there, it is going to be hanging just a little bit low. I would like to get it up a little bit higher. So it looks like if I take a little bit out of these brackets right here and the same over on the other side, I can then make a couple of mounting brackets that run to these, these ears right here on this intercooler core. And then it'd be easy peasy hook up there, hook up down there. Boom, I got myself an intercooler. So uh, the only problem, I, would, I do wish these were on this side so I could have it facing this direction to where the drain was outboard, but then these come out the other side and everything's on this side. So no big deal, we're gonna go over here. Now, this thing does have a cap on it, uh, but it's only for 0.9 bar, which is pretty low. Um, that's what, roughly 14 PSI. This thing should not ever hit 14 PSI because it's not engine heat that it's trying to dissipate. It's only just heat from the intercooler, so I don't expect it to actually gain any pressure. So, but it does have a cap on there to prevent anything from happening. So I need to grind off these studs just a little bit and then make some brackets off of that that hook up to these brackets and grind these down a little bit so I can recess it in there. And then I need to cut these out in order to mount this. All right, here is my finished product on my intercooler or the heat exchanger. Made some brackets here. I still need to paint them up, I guess. But they bolt back behind, they come out, and they hold this in place. And then it's got NPT fittings right here 
for the hose outlets and the one that comes out of this pump's going to run to right there and then I didn't I underestimated the size of my headlight which takes up all of the real estate right there so I'm going to have to come from underneath with the other hose to right there but now we're getting somewhere uh, you see I had to make a relief cut right here and this this piece up there and same thing in that piece I think we're going to be good as long as the bumper fits on there so that should be good and I just got to take it back off paint those real quick let them dry and then we'll be ready to roll uh, still got to have a mount made and welded to this tank to mount this thing solidly but here's where the intercooler tank goes drops down to the pump down below which comes over into the intercooler in the front out of the heat exchanger up into the intercooler where then it cools off the intake charge. 